here with Todd Park, the US CTO, and I have a simple question for you. Is open data all about the apps? Absolutely not. I mean, apps are certainly part of it, but they're actually um, only a portion of it. I think not even potentially the majority of the real impact that open data can have. So um, it's certainly liberating open data in machine readable form um, can help produce more apps, and that's great. Uh, but uh, just to think about concentric circles of value beyond the apps, uh, a lot of the most profound uses, for example, in health data are in the form of services, right? So not in the form of iPhones or iPad apps uh, that consumers use directly, but uh, integrating that data into electronic health record systems that run hospitals uh, and, and with industrial strength operations and making sure that docs and nurses get the right information at their fingertips to, to make life-saving decisions. Right? Or uh, apps um, uh, uh, that actually are not uh, used by consumers, but again, systems that uh, help, for example, uh, everyone from journalists to mayors make better public policy decisions, right? Uh, that uh, can lead to, for example, efforts to address health disparities or efforts to actually take food deserts, which are big swaths of uh, the country where you can't get access to affordable healthy food and decide and actually change uh, policy to enable food oases to sprout up, right? And then you have a whole bunch of people, thousands of people in that food desert that now benefit from our data, but they didn't use an iPhone app to actually get that benefit, right? I mean, they didn't even know the data was involved, right? Just a mayor or a county commissioner saw the data uh, was actually able to use to make a better, better decision. But even beyond that, um, you know, uh, their, their impact on marketplaces. And open data has the ability to help uh, folks hold folks accountable, right, and lead to more transparent, freer, more competitive marketplaces. So a lot of folks actually talk, for example, about how uh, increased data on uh, healthcare provider quality helps consumers pick better providers. That's true. I actually think the even bigger benefit is that the providers are going to see how they perform relative to each other, uh, and that causes them to compete with each other, um, and uh, for all kinds of reasons, to actually improve performance. And so it's about creating a more competitive, transparent, open marketplace. It's about being able to hold key institutions of society accountable uh, to the public uh, and to do so through the power of data. So can, much, much, much more than the apps. Can you give me some substantive examples of the different trends or outcomes you just described? Yeah. So uh, so apps, of course, you can see lots and lots of apps, uh, like iTriage. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pick ones from the health space. So iTriage, which is a spectacular mobile app. Uh, it's been downloaded six million times, three mm -hmm. to four million mobile sessions a I month. thought you just said it wasn't about the apps, though. Yeah, but you wanted an example of each of the conceptual circles. Okay. So, so okay. I don't want to kind of poo-poo the apps, right? Yep. So I choose an example of why you can't ignore the apps. All right. I mean, it's a great app used by a ton of people mm -hmm. uh, that has helped people find the right provider um, and get access to care, right? Which is important. So that's one. Um, but you know, from a service standpoint, um, there uh, is a big shift in American healthcare uh, uh, moving uh, from paying providers uh, by the surgery or by the hospital state to instead pay providers to keep people healthy. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole class of new companies that are offering these comprehensive services that help docs and hospitals um, in data-driven ways uh, succeed against that mission uh, mm -hmm. and take really integrated, proactive care of people using data, uh, coordinating care, engaging patients to actually ensure that they avoid the complication, stay out of the ER, stay out of the hospital. So, for example, data embedded in the service, right, that mm -hmm. delivers this very fundamental outcome. Uh, in terms of actually um, uh, public accountability, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a great example is an example I spoke about uh, maybe a couple videos ago, uh, which is the publication by Medicare of hospital quality data, um, which on a bunch of different metrics um, has from 2006 to uh, today actually led to, uh, with really no change in reimbursement, uh, competition by hospitals uh, to improve those statistics to get them to a to much better place. Statistics like um, giving folks antibiotics an hour before surgery or ensuring that a particular class of folks have a heart attack and then 90 minutes of coming to an ER actually get a particular procedure which could really save their life. Um, and so, uh, again, you know, the hospitals improving uh, those uh, statistics. I mean, it wasn't consumers using an iPhone that somehow auto-directed the hospitals to do it. The hospitals, because they knew the data was out there, because it was being reported, because they're competitive, uh, decided to actually take action. So, for governments that already have digital data, um, the costs of releasing it are definitely less, right? That they can uh, post it online. In some cases, yeah. if they already have a, a data warehouse, that may be as simple as changing the setting. Uh, in other cases, it may just be simply putting up an FTP server. Yeah. Simple things. Yeah. Um, for other governments, though, and there are lots of them around the world, uh, there are costs associated with digitizing things. They, they are working from paper-based systems or they're working from documents. And to make it into machine-readable data, which makes it usable uh, to entrepreneurs in the ways that you've described and usable to, uh, for journalists and usable for advocates, there are costs associated at least in terms of the time, but often in terms of the technology that might take someone to do that. Um, how should other countries and our cities who have these same challenges 
be thinking about the rewards versus the investment. Some yep. would say the return on investment absolutely. from so making the data more open. Yep. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so first of all, kind of as a backdrop, I think that the cost of scanning uh, and uh, OCR solutions is actually you know, dropping significantly. So that's actually a good backdrop of offering, but it's still, you know, uh, 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 it doesn't mean that it's going to be costless, right? Mm -hmm. To actually take paper data to digital. So, so I think it's phenomenally important um, in in such context to remember that data by itself is useless, right? So I can't eat data, uh, I can't pour data on a room and heal it, I can't pour data on my house and make it more energy efficient, right? Um, I can't pour data on the street <laughs> and have that naturally make everyone more accountable. Data is only useful if it actually gets applied uh, to deliver significant benefit to the public. And so the thing that, that, uh, that, that, that I think we would advise is, you know, don't just think about randomly making data available, right? Think about what are the social outcomes you want, right? Do you, do you want to actually hold your health system accountable uh, for the quality of care? Do you want to hold your government accountable for its performance? Do you want to actually uh, enable folks to actually really understand the, the performance of your educational institutions? Do you actually want to uh, really understand um, what's going on um, in the energy operations uh, you know, uh, uh, of the country? I mean, what is the social good you're trying to produce, right? And then work backwards from there and say, okay, what are the data sets that are most helpful made available uh, to better functioning marketplaces in healthcare, education, energy, that really advance public safety, that actually really truly help hold government accountable on things that are really important to citizens, right, where there's a huge delta, right, a huge positive delta associated with that data being made available in the outcome that you want, and then target uh, those data sets uh, for publication. Um, make sure you engage from the beginning innovators to help you understand uh, you know, what data needs to be available for those outcomes to actually be produced. Uh, engage them in ideation workshops, you know, do challenges, do hackathons, do data proofs to celebrate people do this, uh, and, uh, and just relentlessly focus on the outcome that you want. I suppose just publishing everything that moves uh, in the hope that something will happen that will be cool. So this sounds a lot like the strategy that you ran at HHS. Yes. You're now the US CTO. Yes. We've had an open data program in the United States for three years now. US Data Gov just turned three and there are 1,515 raw data sets on there and hundreds of thousands of GIS shapefiles too. Um, how are you gonna scale this thinking yes. across government and, and make the same kinds of improvements that you saw at HHS everywhere else? Why, why isn't this just more of the same? How, yes. how are we gonna make the old Fantastic open data question. program better? Fantastic question. So that actually brings us full circle to how we started the uh, interview a few videos ago. Yep. This is the, the, the heart of the mission of the open data initiatives program. Um, it's to actually uh, make a strong move toward uh, not just data liberation, uh, but catalyzing an ecosystem of data supply and use that produces actual outcomes that society cares about. Right. So for each of the initiatives we're launching under the aegis of this Open Data Initiatives program, like the Education Data Initiative, the Energy Data Initiative, the Safety Data Initiative, the Impact Data Initiative, we are kicking them off with ideation workshops where we're bringing in uh, 40 top innovators in tech and education showing them the data, asking them what do you find particularly useful, and what could you do with this, uh, having them brainstorm what they actually do, publishing the ecological capital for the whole country, challenging the country actually come up with, with even more ideas, and then showcasing uh, the best prototypes, uh, the best new products and services at uh, education data pollutes in 90 days hence, which then triggers another round of innovation and data liberation as we had talked about before. But it's very outcomes oriented. Um, and it's, 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 it's not, again, just about liberating the data. It's not even about a particular set of services. It's about catalyzing the emergence of ecosystems of data liberation and data use that produce outcomes that people really care about, which is better health care, better education, improved public safety, uh, uh, greater energy efficiency and energy outcomes, uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, an ecosystem that continuously virtually spirals upward in terms of data release improvements uh, and innovations that, that, again, produce ever better results against those outcomes. That, that, that's what the American people really care about. What steps are you and the US CIO, CIO that is uh, Stephen Van Roekel, going to take in the next six months to make sure this actually starts happening? Oh, well, you know, the, the, uh, the digital government strategy that Steve outlined has a whole host of next steps uh, at the government wide level, uh, like uh, uh, putting APIs on data and uh, mobilizing government services. Uh, and uh, you know, turning open and achievable into the default status of government data uh, creating going forward. But, but uh, on top of that, of course, there are the five projects we just talked about. Uh, projects okay. we're bringing in, CIS invaders, government invaders, and mashups to, to actually advance the ball in a very concrete way um, on, 
on, on, on all the stuff we just talked about. Uh, and in the concept of open data initiatives, you know, uh, look for ideation jams happening uh, soon. Uh, look for data pollutants happening soon. Uh, and uh, look for progress along the lines of what we just talked about okay. uh, happening at, at Lightspeed. Thank you, Todd. Thanks so much.